Okay, students, very good morning. Uh, so, moving to the last experiment of BTY 106. Um, the aim of this particular experiment is determination of Km and Vmax of salivary amylase. So, students, basically, this enzyme is considered to be one of the basics of biochemistry because enzyme is involved over here well uh, i hope you all have gone through the topic of enzyme already in the class or maybe you you might be having that e resources available with you you all should know that enzymes actually act onto the substrate to convert it into a product students every reaction has a particular rate that is we are studying it in a kinetics right so every reaction where an enzyme is acting upon to the substrate to convert it into a product is going to be studied over here also but in this experiment we are mainly talking about the kinetics part but don't worry you are not going to involve too much into the calculations km also to called as michaelis lenten constant and vmax is the maximum velocity of that reaction here we are going to use the enzyme salivary amylase that means the enzyme amylase which is present in your saliva so you yourself are going to use your saliva as an enzymatic source which contains amylase okay so this is the basics we all know we are uh, as we all know we have already done the utilization of a spectrophotometer. Again, you are going to prepare the tubes like that as you have done earlier. You need uh, certain chemicals like 0.02 molar sodium phosphate buffer. Same phosphate buffer you have prepared in experiment number one and in certain other experiments also. Uh, pH 7, you have to keep that for that buffer. Then you have to take sodium hydroxide. You have to use dinitrosalicylic acid that is dns it is very important right right I'll, I'll explain its significance in the coming slides and starch see when you are using amylase it means the substrate for this amylase is starch which is a polysaccharide a carbohydrate okay so you are going to take this in the concentration of two percent fine and amylase as i already told you is present in your saliva so what happened is that when a reaction is being proceeded the substrate is being acted upon by the enzyme products are being formed initially when the velocity of the reaction is zero i think v null right it is written over here v null or v zero it actually increases as the reaction proceeds initially it was v zero so what happened when the concentration of substrate is increasing the velocity of the reaction goes on increasing it's very simple concept that is enzyme molecules are getting more and more of the substrate so the reaction rate is getting higher fine so what happened is that once this is going on a point is reached at which there is no further increase in that initial velocity and at this point there is no dependence of this reaction rate on to the substrate concentration which I have written over here in bracket. So beyond a particular substrate concentration, the velocity remains constant, means at that point it remains constant and there will be no further increase. At this place, the substrate concentration gets saturated with enzyme. So at this place, we are replacing the term V0 with Vmax. That is written in the last paragraph. So at this point where the maximum velocity of an enzyme catalyzed reaction is approached and the substrate's concentration is at its saturation this is called as Vmax so students this is the importance of this reaction km or michaelis menten constant is substrate concentration it is the affinity with that substrate concentration when there is a lower of km it means the reaction has to proceed faster 
more of substrate concentration is needed when it happens so the km will definitely keep on moving high okay so when i'm talking about something about alpha amylase the nomenclature is mentioned over here this ec is enzyme commission if you have uh, studied the chapter of enzyme the classification of enzyme it is like this 3.2.1.1 this is the naming of this enzyme there are six broad such classes of that enzyme o t h l i l oxidoreductase transferase hydrolases lyases isomerases and ligases so if this is 3 the fir first word 3 first digit 3 it means o t h it means hydrolases this is hydrolases right so what happened is that it breaks down the polysaccharides such as starch and glycogen into glucose and molecules it's a very simple concept right so you are going to measure the activity of amylase by its ability to hydrolyze starch because it is a hydrolase it produces maltose fine as an end product now this maltose will react with dns which is a coloring reagent and at this point you are going to measure this optical density it means when dns will react with this product it will give the color so if there is product formed when it will be formed when amylase acts onto the starch if it acts onto the starch it will form the product and if product is formed it will react with dns to give the color so it means you are going to check the absorbance the same thing which you have done earlier also so this is the actual procedure you are collecting your amylase this is also written in your lab manual right you are preparing buffer you are taking uh, saliva from your mouth with the help of a cotton fine just chew that cotton squeeze that cotton in a test tube collect whatever amount you can able to collect then dilute it 20 times that is 1 ml of your saliva 19 ml of your water fine or oh, sorry buffer so the same buffer which you have just talked about then use it as a crude enzyme preparation then how will you proceed for uh, effect of substrate concentration because that is what you are going to check then you can refer the lab manual there is a table in each tube as you all know you have to add certain particular components in a particular sequence here you are going to use three of the things starch which is a substrate amylase which is your enzyme and third is buffer ye teeno aapko different different concentration mein i mean different different volumes jaise hum pehle karte the you just go through that uh, table you will be able to understand how you have to set the tube in which tube how much you have to add but make sure here you are going to make enzyme blank substrate blank in enzyme blank you will be taking only enzyme in substrate blank you will be taking only substrate and then you will be taking preparing your tubes with increasing concentration of starch students please check it carefully the concentrated starch the stock solution of starch that you are using over here is 2% it means 2 g per 100 ml okay now calculate it accordingly it is given in your manual wahan par ek chote sa galti hai if you find it out let me know okay so this is the uh, preparation of tube keep those tube at 37 degree centigrade for 2 minutes after that what you have to do you have to add 1 ml of dinitrosalicylic acid please check the manual you have to see how dns is needed to be prepared however it is prepared in the lab already you will get it but you should know how it is prepared uh so add it add it 1 ml in each of the tubes in all even in blank even in test solutions also incubate them in boiling water bath for 5 minutes record the optical density at 540 nanometer which is the lambda max and then you have to draw a graph with increasing concentration of substrate matlab zero pe lowest wala rakhna hai uske baad highest ki taraf move on karenge and od jo bhi aayegi so what happened is that you will be observing that how with increasing substrate concentration how much is the effect on od 
So your OD will definitely be increasing because substrate concentration is increasing and enzyme is acting upon to that substrate. But if I talked about what you have to check and uh, you are going to check Vmax and KM, right? So logic of the experiment is if you doesn't stop this reaction, you have stopped the reaction by adding DNS and boiling it. If you don't stop this, if you keep this reaction goes on after a particular period of time, you will be observing that the Vmax value has reached and beyond that point, the absorbance value is not going to increase. It does, it simply means that substrate is now saturated, fine. So the point where you won't find any increase in absorbance at that moment, that is the Vmax. When you plot it onto the graph, you will be able to understand. But how to find out the Km value, the Vmax value, the other different values. So for, I'll be telling you what you need to do. First, you need to put the values in the lab manuals observation table. Then you have to plot a graph using uh, substrate concentration and OD, which normal aap graph banate the jaise. Then you have to make a graph between 1 by S and 1 by OD. Fine. So, I have also pasted over here one graph. First, you go through the glossary. Now, this is what I am talking about. You have to make a graph between 1 by S and 1 by OD. O 1 by OD is on Y axis, 1 by S is on the X axis. So, whatever readings you are having, so put that in 1 by 1 by 1 by, fine. So, there may be your graph is moving towards the left hand side, this means towards negative. So, first you draw this graph and then try to find out the values where this graph cuts over here, it is minus 1 upon km. Then from this you can calculate km. From where this cuts on y axis, you can calculate 1 upon Vmax. So, Vmax can be calculated. So, you do not need to be worried about intercept which is km by Vmax. So, if you want to calculate Vm, Vmax and km, you have to draw the graph of 1 by Vmax, sorry 1 by uh, S and 1 by OD. If you need any assistance, any queries, I will be available in the doubt clearance sessions also. Just go through this uh, glossary also that I have written here uh, and any doubts, I have, will be planning one uh, uh, doubt clearance session from 11.30 am till 12. So if you have any doubts, ask me, I will be available. Till that time, thank you so very much.